Um, so that was the very first model, model suggested. And um, this gets ruled out what's called in Rutherford scattering. So, um, so, uh, so once again, I said I don't want to spend too much time on it. You can read about it on your own if you want to, which is why I'm giving you all these names that you can Google search or read the textbook. Um, so this model gets ruled out in Rutherford scattering or Rutherford scattering experiment. And I'll just uh, quickly describe what that experiment did. Um, so, so, so Rutherford did this experiment specifically trying to settle this question of the structure of atom. Because around the time when he did this, this experiment, so this idea was out there, but there, you know, people were still trying to figure out, is this the correct model or you know, what else could it be? So the experiment that Rutherford de devised was this. Um, how many here are familiar with radioactivity? Or the idea that there's something called radioactivity? Yeah, okay, <laughs> good. So unstable particles like a polonium and whatnot, those things that um, were emitting strange radiations like x-rays that you know, scientists like Madame Curie and other people have studied. Um, and I guess by the time this experiment got done, they had an idea that the result of this radiation was in some cases charged particles. And Rutherford was specifically working with uh, alpha radiation, which is a radiation of alpha particle, which from the experiments he's done, he knew that this alpha particle has charge of plus two E, two elementary charges, and it had a mass of um, four times mass of the proton or mass of the hydrogen. So, uh, so there's some radioactive source that's naturally just emitting these alpha particles, and he's directing this alpha radiation at a target. And the target that, you know, it doesn't have to be this target, but the target that he historically used is a target of gold foil. And really the only reason gold is used is for its material property. It's very ductile, it's malleable, so he could stretch it out to be very thin. And the idea was that within this gold foil, you'd essentially have a kind of single or very thin layer of atoms. So that by looking at how this alpha particle interacts with these gold atoms, he could uh, get an idea of what's the structure of the gold atom. And since you know gold is here, and since the idea is that all these elements would share a similar structure, whatever structure gold atom has, we could uh, infer that similar structure applies all the way down to hydrogen. Yep. So um, there's a prediction you can actually make based on the plum pudding model. So um, I probably should have mentioned this before, uh, but okay, I did mention this, that in terms of the ratio of the masses, electron is very light. And people back then could have figured that out from the experiment with the magnetic field. They could have figured out that this is a very light particle. So they could have figured out that this has one, uh, one over 2,000 or about one over 1,800 of hydrogen mass. And since the, we are kind of trying to put everything else on the positive side, really when you look at the atom, most of the mass is in the positively charged part of the atom. So when you look at this, in this plum pudding model, essentially what you're saying is the the mass is kind of uniformly spread out through this sphere of atom, you know, which is you know, not that un unreasonable of a guess. Now, based on that hypothesis, this is the prediction that Rutherford would make. He, would, he could make the prediction that if he fires this alpha particle with a fair amount of energy and momentum, 
as it's going through this gold foil, if it, this mass is spread out, it won't really get deflected all that much. Right? So it'll interact electrically with these charges. So maybe as it goes through, it'll get deflected a little bit, but not all that much. Because um, it's like you, know, you have a piece of tissue paper and you shoot bullets at it. You don't expect the bullet to get deflected all that much because it has so much more momentum and it'll take so much force to deflect its path. Now, this is the, the result from this experiment that rules out this model is that he got substantial portion of these getting deflected almost straight back. So not all of it. So as it fires these, some of it will get deflected at a very large angle. And if I memorize my numbers correctly, if it looks at the fraction that got back deflected straight back, it was something like one out of 10,000 that got deflected straight back. And so, you know, it's, which is not a lot. But this is a result that's completely inconsistent with this model. Because uh, this model would say um, that nothing should ever get deflected that much. Like, you know, uh, as, like if, I, if I'm firing bullets at the window, I don't expect any bullet to come back and hit me. Because that window is not, well, actually, I don't know about that window. They're blind. <laughs> but now, if we are firing bullets at a wall, or something that has substantial mass to actually be able to absorb the momentum and send it back, then you might see this. So I've seen this experimental result. Um, this is the conclusion that Rutherford was led to from this experiment. This is, by the way, all kind of pre-quantum. People are just trying to figure out what is the structure of atom. And uh, this leads to the idea of atomic nucleus. That the idea that atom has a nucleus. So before, this is what, um, what this plum pudding model was trying to do. You, people knew the size of the atom. So all right, this is the size scale I have. I have some amount of the mass. Let's try to spread it over the size of the atom that I know it must have from my other experiments. When, but this model is inconsistent with this experimental result. So the alternate theory that's put forward is, well, whatever is deflecting these alpha particles back, it must be very dense. It, it, it must have almost all of the mass of the gold in a very small portion so that when these alpha particles are, um, so you know, imagine gold as kind of this, like if this is the gold atom, then in this very tiny region of space is all of the mass of the gold atom and all of its charge. So what is the charge? 79 um, plus 79E. So that if these alpha particles happen to come close to this region of space, then it'll get uh, deflected straight back. But if it happens to pass kind of far away, then it'll get deflected only slightly. So, so that's, the, that's the beginning place of the idea of atomic nucleus. So what, you are, what we are saying now is, all right, so if I have an atom, I know from my other experiment that this atom has size of 10 to minus 10 meters. But if I spread out the mass of the atom across this entire space, then, um, then at no part I have enough density of charge and mass to be able to give me this result. So what I'm going to do instead is put it in a very small region of space, put all of, or nearly all of atom's mass and I guess um, as long as I'm putting stuff there, I do as well put the other stuff. So mass and positive charge. And Rutherford, from the experiment, experimental results, he got, he could actually put a limit to how big this can be. And since we have benefit of the 
modern physics. But the size of the atomic nucleus is, uh, is about 10 to minus 14 meters. So about 10,000 times less in diameter than the size of the atom. So, um, all right, so this explains what um, this explains what Rutherford was seeing. And um, in Rutherford's experiment, you can kind of ignore the electron because it's so light that if it gets in the way, it'll just get pushed away anyway. But it brings us back to the same question as what we were studying out before. If we are being forced to, to put all our mass and positive charge in such a small regional space, um, how are we going to arrange this with the electron in such a way that uh, we get the size of the atom? Because we cannot put the electron in the same space also. So how would you arrange this with the negative charge of electron? So that we have a neutral atom that has a diameter of about 10 to minus 10 meters. This is where sometimes physicists, or scientists in general, take inspiration from what they see. Do you see anything in the universe where you have a lot of mass concentrated in a small region of space, but when you look at the object as a whole, it's actually the object as a whole occupies a bigger space than that high concentrated mass? The galaxy? Galaxy is one. Uh, go a little bit smaller than galaxy so that it's easier to visualize. Solar system, solar system right? So solar system is pretty big. So um, like, uh, you know, from the sun to earth, it's long enough that it'll take eight minutes for light to get here, however long that is. Um, but almost all of the mass of the solar system is at the sun. Sun has like 99% of the mass of the solar system or something. Actually, I forget the exact amount. Jupiter has, anyways, sun has almost all the mass. Now, and here's one more property of solar system that is useful here. Um, so the thing about, if we were just trying to say, oh, I'm just going to put the negative charge at this distance from the positive charge, the problem you would have run into is that this will get attracted into the positive charge. Well, solar system is held together by gravity. Earth is constantly attracted to the sun, but it's not falling into the sun, why not? Because it's in orbit, right? So that's where people get the inspiration. And some people, I guess it's called the Saturnian model, like moons of the Saturn. Um, so that's where people put the idea of, oh, we can put this electron in orbit around the positive charge. So and at least when you start to think about it, then it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's an elegant solution. So. Um, because you have a kind of a semi-stable arrangement of this positive charge, this positive charge with the negative charge. And you can maintain this distance. And you have examples in nature, in fact, in you know, motion of the planet, to see how this might work out, how this might be consistent with the mechanics.